Good morning and welcome to our devotions for Tuesday morning, trusting that we all had a pretty restful night and that we are ready to greet this new day and to be open to see where God is leading us and what God is seeking to do with us today. We give continued thanks for God's mercies, for God's love. We give thanks for each other, for this opportunity to be here, to share in these devotions, to meet, to feel the energy of each other, and prayerfully to embrace all that God is leading us to embrace at this time. And so as we come into this place this day, we want to ask God to be present with us. We call upon those who have passed on, our guides, our ascended ones, those who watch over us, those who moment by moment assist us in many ways. We pray that we may be mindful of their presence, just as Jesus was mindful of the presence of Moses and Elijah. We know that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and we trust that as we journey on that we may be attentive to guidance and to their comfort. We come now this day as we come into our sacred space within ourselves and we take our breaths to bring ourselves into our hearts and to bring ourselves to a place of gratitude as we give thanks for everything in our lives. We continue today to be mindful of all the various circumstances and conditions in our world. We reach out our hands as we seek to embrace each other's hands, to hold each other. I want you to intentionally just hold out your hands and offer them to be held and to feel the other holding your hands. Feel the energy of all of our presence. Allow yourself to experience it. To feel that presence. And as you feel that presence, what you do is pass that presence on. Freely receive, freely give. Freely receive, freely give. Freely receive, freely give. Just feel that sense of grace coming and going until it reaches a point where you can no longer sense it coming and going, but it is just present.
And we imagine a, a wonderful circle of grace just circling. And let's place in the center all those known to us that in some way can benefit from some degree of healing whatever their brokenness, whatever their stress, whatever their discomfort whatever their circumstance let's place them in our midst and as you perceive them in the midst of us with the circling grace. I want to invite you to allow that grace to expand as it passes through you so that you become like a beacon, you radiate. And so there's this encircling light but at every point where one of us sits, there's the full radiation going out towards the circle and away from the circle. This light of love and peace, healing. A light that whoever it touches will experience the healing grace and power of God. Just allow your light to become even brighter. more radiant and as it shines within you ask that it may shine into those areas where there is still a little darkness so that there may be no darkness within you those areas of your life that you are yet to work on those shadow areas allow the light to be directed there at least some of it because the more light that you can receive the more light you can send out radiate and the more light you can radiate, the more souls you can assist. O oh, loving God, who calls us each and calls us into being who sees us as one as we hold each other's hands as we sense each other as we feel your presence help us to be one help us to feel your presence flowing through us Help us to witness your healing work in our world and in our lives. Help us to know you with greater clarity that our lives may be in service to you. In 
Hear this, the prayer of our hearts this day. And lead us into this time of prayer and reflection. Amen. We turn to Matthew's Gospel, the 17th chapter, read in verse 22 to 27. Matthew 17, 22 to 27. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes, he does. And when he came home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, What do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their children or from others? When Peter said, from others, Jesus said to him, then the children are free. However, so that we do not give offense to them, go to the lake and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them, for you and for me. Here ends the reading.
when we listen to Jesus' words, we always have to conclude that yes, we can, in a sense, see why he was gotten rid of. It seems that Jesus, with his level of awareness and understanding, and with his clarity of thought, saw through the nonsense of the day, and oftentimes pointed out the errors. You know, it is an interesting idea for us, or more especially, one could actually say it's an, it's an interesting standpoint. Because I think it happens to all of us, we, we pause for a minute and if we would think we would say to ourselves, well, hold on, that doesn't make sense. But our world thrives on persons not thinking. Our world thrives on persons going along with the crowd, not disturbing the boat. And oftentimes, persons will say that to you. Let it go, don't, don't worry about it. And so oftentimes, there are persons who are negatively impacted. But we keep quiet because more often than not, it doesn't really impact on us. And so we don't worry about it. We ignore it. And this ability to ignore causes some horrible things to occur in the lives of individuals. Because if you don't ignore, you get branded as a fanatic. You get branded as a disturber of the peace. That great peace that we all want to preserve. It doesn't mind, it doesn't matter who is suffering under that so-called peace. As long as there's peace. In the reading for this morning, Peter is challenged about the master paying the temple tax. And Peter assures that yes, he does pay the tax. But Jesus raises it and he uses a wonderful little analogy. He says, the kings of the earth, when they take their toll or tribute, do they take it from their children or do they take it from other people? Peter said to take it from other people. And Jesus said, well, then the children are free. Hmm. The children are free. And he goes on to, in a sense, say, well, you know, as usual, just for the sake of the peace, so we wouldn't disturb them on Julie. Here's what to do. and You'll find your coin and pay it for you and for me. In this instance, Jesus points out the error, but he keeps the peace. But in pointing out the error, no doubt he causes Peter to 
reflect. And there are often times when, yes, for the sake of the peace, we proceed. But it's also important to point out the error. So that hopefully a day will come when enough persons would see the error and say no more. This is not fair. This is not respectful of the dignity of all persons. And this is important that these things are done because if these things aren't done, we, we run the risk of not allowing persons their right as human beings We've got to be able to point out the nonsense of our world at times. We don't have to be aggressive or violent, but we need to point it out. Because at times what happens is that persons end up doing something that might have begun in good sense but over time the real meaning got lost or the real purpose got lost. It reminds me of a story I once heard. A story of a young woman who baked this special bread and she was visited by a friend one day and the friend had come to see her make this special bread because it was a really wonderful bread. And this, the friend was taking notes. And when she'd gotten everything prepared and all the dough was ready, it was ready to, to be placed in the pan. She took her knife and she cut off the two edges, the two ends of that which she had rolled. And then she put it in the pan. And her friend looked at her and asked her, Why did you do that? Why did you cut off the ends? And she said, Well, this is how mum did it. So I just follow her recipe and her method to the T. And the friend, curious, said, But well, you should ask her one of these days why she did that so that we could have a good sense as to what it was for. <clears throat> so the lady agreed and at the next opportunity she got, she asked her mom why she did that. And the mother explained that she had inherited this recipe with the quantities from her mother. But she could never find a pan big enough for the recipe that her mother had. And she wasn't too sure how to reduce it. So she always cut the ends off because of the pan. It's not a part of the process. It was just for convenience. Sometimes we do things thinking that there is a reason behind it. And if we investigate, we learn that it is either for convenience or someone misinterpreted or someone decided to use it to their benefit. And through time, it became what it was. A similar incident is there is a story that says that we eat fish on Good Friday because there was a time when there was a particular Pope who had fishing vessels and he decreed that all should eat fish on Good Friday. I don't know how true that is, but it's just one of those stories that passes around. But the point is clear. 
Why are we doing these things? Do they really have purpose? And are they truly beneficial? We live in a world where persons are becoming more and more concerned about what they give assent to. And our youth especially, there's something else. They question everything. Things that you and I would have taken for granted. They say, why? And oftentimes we are stumped and we get annoyed because we don't want to admit that we never ask why. But they will not rest until we can tell them why. This is a period of awakening. We've got to be awakened. We can't sleep anymore. There's a lot that depends on our being conscious, awake, clear about what we do and why we do it, what it is for. So Jesus offers the little challenge to Peter today. No doubt there are many other challenges that can be offered. Just give it some thought and see what it is that you may be doing that really doesn't make any sense, but you've inherited it. And see how you can move to a place where you find a way of being and a way of engaging that makes sense not only for you, but for those who will come after you.